Now, his newest film, The BFG, is hitting theaters next month. The legendary director, writer, producer Steven Spielberg joins us live from Los Angeles with more on The BFG. Good morning, Steven. Good morning, Hulisa. Good morning, Mary Ann. I really feel like I should say Mr. Spielberg. I know. I know. <laughs> How rude. No, I just called him Steven. Please, so call me Steven. Rude of me. No. Uh, let's, let's talk about the BFG. This is based on a, a Roald Dahl book, a beloved mm -hmm. uh, book written in the 80s, uh, one of dozens of books that he wrote. How did you come to choose this story to turn into a movie? Well, you know, I didn't think of it at first because I had spent so many years as my kids were at different ages reading the book to them and at the same time enacting BFG because when you read a book, you, you're, you're, you're the actor, you play all the roles. And I was really familiar with the book. So when my, uh, the, the screenwriter that wrote E.T., Melissa Matheson, she wrote that for me. When she adapted the book and showed me her script, I rediscovered it. Literally overnight, and said, "I've got to tell the story now. The, the time is the time is right for this." I, I saw a couple of the trailers, and just it looks like such a sweet movie. The animation is amazing. How you bring the giant to life, but you chose to tell the story through the little girl's eyes. Yeah, I think the storyteller is the little girl. It's her story. She narrates it, and uh, you really feel this is about her experience. But through her eyes, you get to see the goodness, the friend, friendliness of the BFG. And you also get to see, you know, his problems with his older, twice as bigger brothers. And, um, and you really get to understand that she needs a plan. She needs to help BFG solve all of his problems in this terrible situation they're in in giant country. And so she becomes a very strong, young, leading lady. And, and I, I think it's great that Raoul Dahl had chose not a boy, but a little girl to be the protagonist yeah. mm -hmm. of his book. Well, we like that one, yeah. right? Uh, so um, this is your first uh, foray into uh, maybe making movies with Disney. And so we have to ask, because it's a Disney yes. movie, did you kill off a parent? <laughs> because <laughs> they, they, they kind of tend to they, do that. They, you they know, kinda, Disney's like that. <laughs> Dis Disney's like that, right? They kill off a parent, and Raoul Dahl is very well, child-friendly. So we're wondering, who gets it in your movie? <laughs> Well, no. Nope. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I was very careful about that, knowing that that might have been a kind of prerequisite to a Disney movie. I had kind of went around the back door and decided not to do that wisely. Whoa. Is this yes. the first okay. one? So parents, yes. parents, parents can, can be it. relieved in yes. the movie, and right. somebody's got their back. Spielberg's got their back. <laughs> Stephen, can I can I ask you? Do you do you believe this is true? Being a parent in a Disney movie is tantamount to being a red shirt in a Star Trek film. <laughs> well, well, do I think that's true? No, 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 no. No, no. Being a parent, no, I don't, I don't. Being a parent in a Disney movie is, um, well, it's debatable. <laughs> I love it. You know, you also, you brought back uh, Mark Rylance, uh, who won an Oscar and other awards yes. for uh, Bridge of Spies that he made with you. Uh, was it his, did you hear his voice? I know you were already thinking of the BFG when you made Bridge of Spies. Were you already thinking, I love this guy's voice. He's got to be my giant. Well, it wasn't even the voice so much. It was seeing Mark disappear into the Soviet spy Rudolf Abel's character. And he so completely evaporated himself and became that character. And then between shots, he would become Mark Rylance again. He didn't stay in character. He jumped back to Mark Rylance. And I thought anybody that can make that kind of a transformation, I'll bet if he read the book BFG, he'd be interested in playing the big friendly giant. And at the end of the first day of shooting Mark on, the B on uh, Bridge of Spies, I gave him the script to read. Mark didn't know I was making him an offer. He thought I just wanted his opinion of the script. Mm. So he read it that night. He came back the next day, and he told me it made him cry, and he started oh. telling me his oh. ideas. And I said, Mark, I don't think you understand what I'm, what I, why I gave you the script. It's for you to play the BFG. He had no idea that oh. what, what, what the exercise was all about. Well, people are going to love him. Yeah. They're going to love him sweet. in it as, as the big friendly giant. Uh, Steven Spielberg, it's been an honor. Thanks for chatting with us here yes. on Good Day this morning. The movie opens July Great 1st. Great to be with you. Thanks so much. I'm so happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Parents everywhere are like, whoo!
All right. Woo. Isn't that fun? <laughs> it does. It looks like a very sweet movie. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good one. There are tons of Roald Dahl books out mm -hmm. there that yeah. are just, you know, these great words and all these stories. Yeah. You know, he wrote uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, oh, yeah. Matilda, Matilda yeah. James yeah. and the Giant Peach, all these things. So it seems like a fertile ground for mining for Spielberg movies, mm -hmm. I'm guessing, down the road. And, and just kind of reading some things, I saw a lot of people saying, oh, he brings a little bit of E.T. back mm -hmm. in this one. And so there's kind of some moments that you might, yeah. oh, that's an E.T. moment. Yeah, so it'll be fun to Dude, see. Dude, we just spoke with Spielberg. I know, I know right? <laughs> <laughs> he said my name, <laughs> and he said it right. <laughs> I, I called him Steven. Oh my God, I'm so horrified. <laughs> so rude. We should have taken a selfie. So rude. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Next time. Next.